This is JoJeff551 for a review of the new HP Mini 210 1070NR, in this case, netbook computer. And this is primarily used for remote internet usage. Basically something really small and just powerful enough to surf the internet. Reason being just powerful enough comes with one gig of memory. The video card shares it, unfortunately, but for the internet, doesn't really matter too much, usually. It has an Intel Atom processor at 1.67 gigahertz with basic Windows 7 starter. Overall, for what I see so far, it, you're, if you're used to your regular computer, you're probably going to be slightly disappointed in its performance. Not that it's really doing too bad, it's just you're probably used to your 3, 4, 5, 6 gigahertz computer handling everything and then now you're trying to run the same operating system on something that's almost 1.7 gig. So anyway, as we all know it has a, obviously a keyboard and these arrow buttons are, I see that, you know, they did that to save space, but they're so close together, if you're playing games, you tend to overshoot. A lot of times I hit Alt and Shift rather than left and up, because I'm so used to a bigger dis computer keyboard, which, eh, get over that. Of course it has wireless internet ability, and there is a jack right here to hook up broadband if need be. Your function keys are up top. You hit the function key and then the F1 through F12. So uh, it also has a resistive touch sensitive keypad which is a little flawed in design. Reason being is that the resistive flow also works where the touch buttons are. And if you're like me, you got one finger on the touch sensitive thumb pad and one on the buttons, which on a regular laptop works. But here, if you move the if you move the cursor, which I'm doing right now, and now I'm going to touch the button. See how it just jumped? You get some unpredictability. And sometimes if you're pushing a little too hard, you might accidentally click. So that's something you got to get used to. Okay, now that we got the basics here, how does it perform? Well, when you do something simple like uh, arcade games, if you have MAME like I do, and we got arcade. Now it's going to appear a little distorted. Oh, no, it's actually going to do it right. It runs perfectly fine. Let's just pull up one more just to show you that it does work pretty well. So I mean when you do when you're doing semi semi uh difficult things that require some sort of power, this thing will do pretty well as you'll see that this will scroll pretty smoothly. It's got absolutely no problems. And the sound on this thing, let's just uh, start a game here. We're not going to play a full game. As you can probably hear, it's a little tinny. So, 
It's not the strongest speaker in the world. It does have bass boost. And of course it comes with your word processing paint and what have not. And it'll run a little slower than you're used to. But here's the thing. It's used for the internet, like I said. And it does come with a webcam. In fact, let's show you the webcam. I've there it is. And there's some ugly mutt in the uh, video. And there's my bathroom. <laughs> so, I'm going to move side to side, show you how responsive it is. So now my question is, how is it in the dark? Let's shut the light off. So you can see it's it's still fairly responsive. Of course, you're going to lose a little frame rate to compensate for trying to keep it bright. So you can see the webcam works pretty well. And this thing does come with a Skype. Now I'm going to close it off. There. So, uh, yeah, you can do you can do that type of stuff. However, where performance falls kind of flat is in video. What I mean is, we're going to plug in a flip camera. There we go. Now, in order for you to see this better, we're going to hook it up to a projector. Now, Here's a VGA port in which you can hook up to a projector. And if you hit Windows and P, you can bring up a menu. However, if you just plug in, it'll default at 800 by 600 if your projector supports that. So there it is. It's in the port. The resolution will now change. There we go. And now for the sake of demonstration, we will now switch to the projected display. Please note any lines that you see in the image is just the camera picking up the refresh rate of the projector or possibly the color wheels if you see separated color. Alrighty, let's pull up a video. This is the one thing I was not prepared for. Now watch how fast it plays. Hopefully you'll be able to hear it. Okay, now you're picking up the color wheel. As you can see, it's very slow. In fact, the sound is right now way ahead of the video. I'm talking way ahead. See, in this video, I'm riding an elevator and we haven't even left the first floor yet. And the audio is now at the point where I'm went up from two And now I'm back to one. And I haven't even left that floor in this video yet. Okay, that's how it handles video on the high def front. So here's the question. How does it do on the internet? I have pulled up a couple YouTube videos on my uh, network, which I'm not connected to right now. There are a couple of very weak uh, wireless connections that I could use, but they're not working today, so what I'm going to do is, okay, that's not the one I want to pull up right now. 
is this needs to shrink. See, the touchpad's a little unresponsive at times. And stupid me, I pulled up the same one. All right, this is the one I want to show you. <laughs> it's your basic YouTube. And this is the standard 360p that you're defaulted to when YouTube starts up. So you can see this is the elevator at Best Buy in this in case in this case it plays fairly well. And you can see that there is a little bit of a uh, there is a little bit of um choppiness in the video. In fact, you can see that it's uh getting slashed up a little bit. What happens when we put it to expand full screen? Well, that doesn't matter really because, uh, like I said, I'm disconnected from the internet because the, the Wi-Fi around here isn't working today, so that's what happened there. Now what happens when we crank it? As you can see, we're at high definition and, uh, well, this will be enough. This is the elevator at Best Buy, Nashua, New Hampshire. So you can see it's not keeping up too well. Well, it actually is keeping up, but it's very jerky. We got a choice. So as you can see, performance-wise, uh, it's not exactly meant for high-intensity video. Here it is. However, in the case of flash video, it'll actually... It actually will keep up with the audio, it'll just skip a lot of frames. But then again, you've got a 1 gigahertz process, well, 1.67 gigahertz processor, trying to do high def video, and you get the video sharing the memory. So you only got like, uh, what is it, about 500, uh, 500 megabytes of memory going towards running everything and 250 of it or so is for the video card and the audio is okay for the for the size of the computer doesn't get very loud what you're hearing right now, if you can hear it, is as loud as this little thing gets. Alrighty, we've demonstrated that. Another thing is that it appears that HP is taking a little bit of their uh, design concept from Apple and making it not very customizable. For example, I'd like to get rid of this stupid Windows uh, wallpaper. But unless I, there's something I'm missing, I can't do it. Now you're saying to yourself, uh, why don't you just go to uh, Start, Control Panel, and Display. Well, watch what happens when it gets there. You can adjust the brightness color scheme okay display settings nope you can't cannot do it there's no option for that there's option for changing wall, uh, the screen saver but like right there but see there goes the pointer again But as you can see, there's no other tabs to do anything. And that's it. Hope you enjoyed.